I mean, who, who cares, Emily, is really my overall sense. I haven't actually read the book and I haven't read the snippets, but you can't have been alive in England today and not been aware of a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and I suppose what I feel is that this man is running the country, extremely difficult. He's uh, tried to keep us safe uh, from terrorism. He's got uh, uh, big issues in Iraq and Syria, huge issues over the economy, huge issues over domestic policy, over the future of Europe. Uh, and quite frankly, why are we here talking about stories that well might not be true, uh, put up by a very rich man who's personal promotion prospects are of no interest to the nation. Why are we talking about this and what possible relevance has it got to the Prime Minister and how he conducts office? And if, you know, if there is relevance, if what he may or may not have done when he was a young man uh, talks directly to how he is as Prime Minister, well, I think that is, you know, could, could, could be important. And I want to come back to that. Let's first of all look at the sordid re re revelations, um, which Anthony Seldon has dismissed. Do you think the stuff about the pig is true? Well, we've been very careful in the way that we've worded our account. This is not myself and Lord Ashcroft making these allegations. We're very clear about how they came about. They came to us from a distinguished MP who was a contemporary you of Cameron's at Oxford. Your name's on the cover. What we've said is that this is the account that we were given, and we initially dismissed it as a joke. However, the source repeated it on a number of occasions. So we've left people to decide for themselves whether it's true. Who cares uh, about it? Story. Well, Anthony, let's put this story in context because it is a few paragraphs in a book which is some 200,000 words long. But, but can I just go back to the, the whole idea? You have printed something that you have no idea uh, whether it's true or not. Have you been back to the source since it was published, since well, it, it came out? Have you it's talked quite to normal today? to present information and allow people to make up their own minds on the one hand, on the other. Newspapers so if we've been talking about a day. crime that somebody had accused David Cameron of committing, would you have printed that and said it's up to readers to decide whether it's true or not? Well, there's certainly no crime in university hijinks. No, but, but, but you, you understand what I'm saying, that the principle is the same. Are you just printing stuff that may or may not be true? You haven't said whether you've been back to the source yet to find out whether they've okayed it, whether they stand by what they said. Well, as I said to you, the source had repeated the allegations on a number of occasions. And I think it's worth pointing out that nobody would give this an inch of credibility if David Cameron hadn't been a member of the Bullingdon Club. That is not disputed. The Bullingdon Club is also a university society well notorious for its there excesses. There are some really, really important claims. Um, if the book is true, or if these bits are, are true, the non-DOM issue, incredibly relevant when David Cameron uh, knew about that, if he did know about it in 2009 before the election, and also this whole idea of some kind of deal whereby a donor who handed over £8 million would get what he considered to be a substantial job. Yeah, it's, it's all pretty uh, distasteful. Well, my, hang on my a minute. Ember, no, there is on. no suggestion of a deal. There is no suggestion whatsoever that Lord Ashcroft felt that by giving millions of pounds he was going to get a job. The issue that they he raises... They discussed the role he might play and was told it would certainly for, not be an insignificant one. After putting his neck on the line money. and ploughing £8 million, but he felt it was a declinable offer? What, 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 what is he that felt, arrangement then? What he felt was that it was important that the Prime Minister should keep his word. That is a question of integrity. This is not about a quid happen. pro quo. It is about integrity. Well, I think the, the word integrity is, is really important here because as authors we have huge responsibility. Uh, and what we say is often believed, whether or not it's true. So to make these allegations about what may or may not have happened at Oxford and to insinuate that they're somehow damaging and this is somehow uh, a slur on his character... Well, uh, I and, haven't and, suggested and, it's a slur on his character. Well, why I put said, it in? Why have, put it in? Anthony, many... I know that your books are very serious academic pieces of work, and that is fine. You're hugely respected for it. That, why but is it in? Why is that bit in if you don't even know Because it's true? this is a biography of the Prime Minister which gives the good, the bad and the ugly. We're not there to write a hagiography. There are some difficult things in there, and there are also plenty of extremely complimentary, flattering things about the Prime Minister in there as y well. You know David Cameron well. You've written 
the authorised biography, Cameron at 10. Do you think the Prime Minister will be asking himself questions about his relationship with people like Michael Ashcroft and, and, uh, and about the, the sort of what patronage does or doesn't do for a political leader? Yes, I, I, I do. I mean, he is a very conscientious, thoughtful person. And one of the things that Peter Snowden and I argue in Cameron at 10 is that he learnt a lot. I mean, he was the youngest prime minister for 200 years, George Osborne. And in many ways, uh, it was a joint premiership between both of them. It was the youngest chancellor of 120 years. I mean, I think they did make mistakes. And in Cameron at 10, we talk about a lot of those mistakes. I think he learnt a lot as he went through the premiership. And yet, if you look at the latest Lords list, that looks like a chumocracy. Yeah, I don't think that was one of his... <laughs> I think that was one of his uh, highlights, uh, and I certainly wouldn't defend that. But I think that, uh, in general, I think that he did learn a lot as he continued throughout the Premiership. And what we tried to do in our book was, warts and all, and there's a lot of criticism in it, lay out in a lot of detail, talking to really deep sources, what we think happened in those five years. Do you worry that when people have reflected on this book, the person that, if you, if you like, comes out looking more sordid is the author rather than the Prime Minister himself? I don't worry about that at all because I know that this book will be judged in its entirety and Anthony himself knows that serialisation yeah. is not representative of the book. In fact, so the serialisation... Yeah. coming. And, and, no, and, I'm and, saying that the serialisation is just day one. Let's talk about this in a month's time when the book has been published. I think David Cameron may be pleasantly... Well, the uh, Catherine I, the Great I, line sticks, isn't it? That's the only yeah. thing that anyone remembers about Catherine the Great nowadays, historians <laughs> aside. Well, I, I certainly uh, agree with Isabel that we must, serialisations often, not often, always, uh, make the most of things, often in a disproportionate way. So let's, uh, Isabel's a very serious writer, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing a whole book and I don't think we should make judgments whether or not it was an error over this particular issue or not, I think we should suspend judgment and I'm looking forward enormously to reading her book. Thank you both very much Thank indeed. You. Thanks for coming in.